tell me saying you're going. Well, you ahead, don't you go? Go for good and leave me in peace. Rates, gas, electricity. All final demands. One final demand I await with pleasure. The last judgment. And you'll be judged as well as me, you stale fish. <laughs> That was seven pounds and twelve hours of oblivion. Perhaps they've come to cut something off. Your head, I hope. Oh. Yes? I, I, I was wondering... Yes? Whether you were having any trouble with your water. Water is something that has never troubled me. No. Uh, uh, no. Uh, that was just an excuse, of course. I, I, I have been a marriage guidance counsellor and a Samaritan, if I could help at all. No! Just to pay for the one you broke. Mrs. Locke, I have a friend in Alcoholics Anonymous. Will you and... get the hell out of here? Don't be a Samaritan to the strippers in Soho. I've done my best to be understanding, Mr. Locke, but really these rows are quite intolerable. I shall make a complaint to the landlord. What did I keep them for? Mementos of mediocrity. <laughs> they say success has to be paid for. Failure comes a bit more expensive. And I have to pay for your failure. Richard Mellow. Oh, Dickie. Damn his guts. <laughs> Will you shut up? Damn travel agents, damn photographers, damn PAs, damn PROs, and damn all the jerks who can't keep a deadline. You haven't done much today, have you? Well, moving these stones does my back in. If you went to the osteopath, whose name, address, and telephone number I gave you, you wouldn't have a bad back. I don't want an osteopath. I just want five minutes' peace, please, Melissa. You've had a whole day's peace while I've been seeing 20 dumb models. Oh, and fixing the air ticket. The hotel, the Italian PR, is an absolute idiot, checking to see if I can get 40 dresses through customs in Rome. Make sure I've got the hairdresser I want and not his stand-in. Why the hell do you still read Variety? Think you're going to make Broadway? Nostalgia, my love. I did make Toronto once. Where did you put my clothes? Clothes? My dry cleaning. Oh, God. Oh, that means you haven't collected it. It's too late. They're closed now. Well, look, I'll, I'll go uh, first thing tomorrow morning. I leave the house at eight. That means I've got to go shopping when I get there or boil in wool in Rome. I'm sorry. My mind was on other things. Yes, I've got to go to the theatre now, too. Now, what for? It's early. Well, we have an equity meeting. Yes, I haven't told you the show closes on uh, Saturday. And it's most unlikely we'll get paid. When did you last get paid for anything? It's rough on the others, that's all. Because they are not subsidised by wives who fly first class to boil in wool in Rome. What time is the night boat to Dublin? Okay. 
yes, yes, I said Dublin. And, and what train from, uh, from London would connect with that? Is, is, is that the first train? And, and, and what time does that arrive in Dublin? Right, thank you, thank you. Dickie. Good Lord. <laughs> uh, do you still live over there? Yes, yes. Still full of actors? <laughs> well, there's, uh, there's one or two of us left. <laughs> now, are you, uh, you off somewhere? Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, well, Paris. What for a dirty weekend? All of the Puritan English would describe a lover's meeting as a dirty weekend. <laughs> No, no, those days are, uh, are over, dear boy. Um, uh, when do you go? Well, I've, uh, I, I've got a couple of hours to kill before I check in at the airport. Oh, because I was uh, just going down the road for a snifter. Ah, my local pub, yes. Well, I, I, I can do with a drink. Oh, good. Good. Is this your, uh, is this your car? Yes, yes, it was a present from uh, Melissa a few years back. Oh, my God. Melissa! I think I need that drink. <laughs> oh, it's nice to see you. Because we never made this, did we, Gus? Uh, I carried a spear here once. Oh, yes. Because yes, I'm uh, working in the Garden Road, actually. Ooh. Ah. But well, not that play that... Uh... Well, got the worst notices I've read in 30 years, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we close on uh, Saturday. Yeah, well, I, I didn't see your name outside the, uh, outside the theatre. No, well, I've only got a very, very small part, you know. Um, I'm understudying as well. Were we bad, or, or was it just bad luck that our names aren't up there? Fergus Locke in King Lear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Richard Miller in Pygmalion, I think. I was a rather good uh, Professor Higgins in New Zealand. Why the hell do you need to play big parts? I've heard that Melissa's... Uh, Whatever the female of a tycoon is. Or tycoonette. Oh, yes, she's got a chain of boutiques from here to Miami. So why don't you sit back and pack it in? Well, because... <coughs> <coughs> because I think she's left me, Gus. She's gone to do a fashion show in Rome. And she's got a chat there, I know that. And uh, I don't expect her back. She will settle in some... Tax haven somewhere with her gigolo. Everything's in her name. All I've got is a car. So I'm an understudy. I'm out of work now, too. Well, if I'd known, I'd have, uh, I'd have called you. Even after 25 years. 
sympathy? No, no. Satisfaction. Because you, you bastard, you took her from me. <laughs> yes, if it hadn't been for that, we might have stayed friends. So I've often missed you, Russ. We'd have rambled on like old hams do, about theatrical digs and disastrous tours. Yes, playing in... Uh... Oh, do you remember now? What the, what the hell was the name of the play? Uh, End of the Brighton Pier. Oh, that's right, that's right. Yes, it was the middle of a four-state gale. Yeah, waves coming through the waves. Yes, and I had to say the line, it's so quiet up here. <laughs> <laughs> and we both collapsed. <laughs> yeah. So did the audience. All yeah, sex. <laughs> Two more, Kathleen. And I'll have a pack of those cigars. Um, let's sit down, shall we? <clears throat> Is that uh, pub time or real time? That's right, by the radio. Only in a Puritan country like England would they set pub talks five minutes fast to make you drink up sooner. Oh, sorry. Water. What, sorry? I said, did you want water? Oh, yes, yes, please. So, what have you been up to lately? Oh, uh, walk-ons in TV, you know. I, uh, I model a bit now. Clothes for the older man, you know, insurance ads. Plan for a happy retirement. I should hate your guts. Well, time cures all things. So they say. Well, Twenty-five years. Haven't stopped me loving Melissa. Ah, well, a woman is only a woman, but a good cigar is a smoke. Oh, was that from some play we were in? Sounds like Noel Coward. <laughs> no, no. It's Rudyard Kipling. Uh, could I, uh, uh one? Help you, sir. Thank you. Uh, do you remember the old story about the two girls? Uh, one says to the other, uh, do you like Kipling? And the other one says, well, I don't know. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember the lovely Noel Coward story? Uh, he was rehearsing some romantic uh, piece of his. And the ingenue was a girl called Maureen Klopp. So uh, when Noel saw the proofs of the bills, he, he took her aside and he said, Darling, uh, darling, uh, you're a lovely girl in a lovely play, uh, but I really can't have my name on the bill with someone called Maureen Klopp. So go away, darling, and come back tomorrow and tell me some nice new uh, ethereal uh, name you found for yourself, you see. So she uh, went home, came back the following day. And uh, Noel said, uh, have you found that name, darling? And she said, yes. So Noel said, tell me. And so she said, Diana Klopp. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I remember. Did you know him, Dickie? No, no. Then why do you call him Noel? Oh, God, Gus. So no, that does have it. We all do it. How was the marriage? Oh, there was a boy and a girl. Oh. And uh, where are they? The boy's in New York. And uh, the girl does some sort of work with children. I've rather lost touch with him. Doesn't sound as though the love match worked out. Well, I never made it as an actor, and Melissa was a great success. You know, she got in on the 60s boom, and then she went in for ethnic stuff, you know, caftans and all that. And then she made workman's overalls a rage. So now there are girls all over the world walking around with a label Melissa on their bottoms. <laughs> Whatever happened uh, to that ghastly girl she was at art school with? Um, short legs and freckles and, and, and screwed back hair. Do you remember? She was sort of dumpy and had to have every joke explained to her twice. <laughs> God, she was awful. Ah, smelt like the inside of a tart's handbag. What was her name? Audrey. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Whatever happened to her, did she ever get anywhere? No, not far. She married me. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, God! That was funny! I, 
I wish I'd heard that description all those years ago when I asked her to marry me. <laughs> On the reaper. When you stole Melissa. Gosh. Oh, yes, you did, you devious bloody liar. And the pair of you, like burglars, who mess up the carpets. You messed up my life. Two more, Kathleen. No, no, this is uh, my round. Buy it, then. The same again, please. Right. How was your marriage? Bust, like yours. We couldn't have children. Uh, then she found out that I was chronically unfaithful. So she took to religion and illness. When she wasn't in church, she was in a hospital. Cool. Well, Melissa was always doing the place up. And if we weren't converting the attic, we had to have a patio. It was yesterday. With unpaid labor, mine. Melissa was... And I've, I've known of you. The most beautiful woman, dressed or undressed, I have ever seen. You know who she reminds me of? No? You know what reminds me of her? Every time I see a picture of Marilyn Monroe, the hair that was blonde without being blonded. The vulnerable red mouth that was, was like a kiss without being kissed. Has she changed much? She was rich enough not to change. Oh. Bloody hell with her, my whole life might have been different. Work, sex and everything. Gus, that's fantasy. So what are you going to do when your show closes? Oh, take a break. On what's left in our joint account. Go back to where I grew up, uh, Suffolk, Norfolk. Find a pub somewhere. Traffic news. The M1 between junctions four and five. Yes, Audrey and I used to go cruising on the Norfolk roads. We'd hire a boat, you know. Yeah, it's a boring, flat country. Too much water. Police say it might not have been discovered for weeks if tenants living below had not seen bloodstains on their ceiling. The police wish to interview Mrs. Locke's husband, Fergus Locke, described as an actor and mayor. <laughs> Go Hold it by the bar. Quick, move. Come on, Paul, get over there. Come on. You're not the kind of chap who carries a gun. That's not real. It's real, all right. You know what I got it? But you ran off with Melissa. Don't move, Kathleen. I didn't come in here for the pleasure of your company. I thought if anything goes wrong, you might help me with an alibi. And now it has gone wrong. Stay where you are, Kathleen. I wouldn't want to shoot a girl from Galway. Mr. Murphy? Mr. Murphy? Yeah. He's that murderer. Well, give him a chance. He never had a chance in all his life. Mr. Murphy! Come on, come on, I'll never make it. Come on, I gotta be on that boat. I gotta be on that boat tonight. Come on.
hell are the police doing here? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Please. 